Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint & Sip and this is Paint & Sip at Home. So today we're going to be painting Morning Rise Rooster and I'm going to be sipping on a little Merlot and if you enjoy watching this video today I do encourage you to like and subscribe and also check out my Patreon page because there you're going to find some additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right so for the materials today I'm going to be using a Stretch and Prime 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. The colors are titanium white, deep yellow, fluorescent orange, green oxide, burnt umber, which I'll call brown, Mars black, fire red, and cobalt blue. And of course you can switch up those colors, but that's what I'm gonna be using. For my tools today, I'm using a standard number two pencil. For my brushes, I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush, I have a number seven round brush, and a number zero round brush. I'll refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And of course you can switch those up if you'd like. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably want a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, I do have a couple of additional resources for you. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the same large canvas to the paints and the brushes and all that good stuff. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna be doing for the first step is we're drawing an outline of our hills. I'm gonna be using my pencil and I'm really gonna just draw myself some imaginary hills. You can certainly copy mine um, distinctly if you'd like to, but the only thing that I'm really looking to do here is kind of make them look like they're rolling and I want a spot where my sun is gonna kind of just peek through, um, come rise behind them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with a couple of markers uh, and then I'm just gonna draw a nice little outline. So I'm gonna, if this is about my halfway point on my left hand side, I'm gonna just drop a little bit lower than my halfway point, make myself a bit of a marker. And then on the right hand side, I'm gonna go a little bit higher than my halfway mark. So if this is about my halfway mark, I'd go just a little bit higher, maybe about an inch or so higher. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna carefree, in a carefree way, make a couple of hills. So I'm gonna maybe go up here a little bit and then just dip this down like this. Maybe start about midway up that hill and come on up in through here. Maybe make myself a little bit of a hill like that. And then maybe I'll have a nice rolling hill coming down somewhere in through here and just meeting up like that. And that's all I'm gonna do for my hill outline. We're gonna use our large brush for the next step so you can just get that out and ready. All right, so what I'm gonna do for the next step is I'm painting my sky. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. I'm gonna be using a whole lot of colors. <laughs> so I'm using white, yellow, orange, blue, and brown. And how I'm gonna be doing this is I'm gonna have my sun in through here. It's gonna have a bit of a yellow glow around it. And then I'm gonna have my, I'm gonna have the oranges in the sky and the blue in the sky. And it's gonna be like the clouds are just lifting off and it's gonna be a beautiful day once all those clouds uh, dissipate. So I'm gonna start with just white paint on my brush and I'm gonna put my sun in place. It's okay if you bump into your hills, it's even okay if your pencil kind of pulls through your paint a little bit, no big deal. I'm gonna make my white area bigger than I want my sun to be because when I go to put the glow around it with a little bit of yellow and white, which is what I have on my brush now, I like to back it into my sun a little bit so that way I have a nice soft transition around the edge of my sun because I want this to look like it's 
glowing as opposed to just a perfect circle um, coming up over the over the hills. So I've got that started and I am not using a lot of paint at all right now. I just have yellow and white on my brush. Um, I am going to be using very little paint and the reason I'm going to use a very little paint is because I'm going to want to have multiple layers on this sky and I want to be able to change colors and add these layers as I go. I just picked up a little bit of orange and white. Now I'm going to get some of this to, to go in here. I'm using a circular type brush stroke. You can certainly use a you know left to right crisscross kind of, kind of brush stroke if you want to, but my real key is just not using a lot of paint because I want to be able to, like I said, add layers upon layers and I want it to dry fast for me. So right now I'm going into my blue and white and I'm gonna start adding some blue into my sky. And again, I'm going to be layering this so I will add darker tones on top of it to make it look like those clouds are really just billowing, billowing over it. But again, I'm not using a ton of paint on my brush. I do caution you that you don't want to have um, too much yellow left on your brush when you go into the blue because yellow and blue makes green and you don't want to have a big huge green sky. So Again, just that's why I went into orange after I finished up with my yellow. And now what I'm doing, I'm just kind of using a little bit of paint. I just picked up some brown. I'm gonna to start toning down this blue at the top a little bit. I'm gonna get it really light down at the bottom right in a second here, but I'm just kind of floating around the sky, letting my brush run out of paint as I go through this process. And again, I'm gonna be doing another layer on top of it within this step. So I am not going to be using a lot of paint. I'm going to make it go a little bit more neutral and light down here on the bottom right hand corner. So I'm using a little bit more brown and white and I do want it to go pretty light as it hits the horizon, but I am definitely not using a ton of paint at this at this stage and I'm going to as soon as I'm done getting this first layer on I'm just going to wash my brush and start back at the beginning and do that second layer as this is drying. I like doing these multiple layers just back to back like this one on top of each other so that way I can get them to really blend together and, and work really well together and as I'm doing this second layer I'm going to overlap some of these colors. So I just put more white on my brush and I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of that yellow to just make sure that this transition is really the way that I want it to be. And now I'm going to start picking up a little bit of orange and white and making sure that this has a beautiful transition going off into the distance over here and they overlap each other. So the the glow of the sun is just casting this beautiful pinkish peaches, peachy kind of hue on here. And you can get yours to be as vibrant as you want. I just picked up just the orange alone. So you can really get this to be as vibrant, you know, or as subtle as you want. So if you're painting a lawn and you're like, oh, I really like those, those peachy orangey tones, feel free to use more of them. Right now I'm gonna pick up a little bit of orange and the brown, and that's gonna really put these deep tones up at the top of the sky where those clouds are just really, they want they want to be removed for the day, but they're just telling you we're still here <laughs> and they're just overlapping and you can see those little pop throughs of the blue underneath. So you can definitely have fun. And if you found yourself with your, your first layer was still a little bit too wet for you. You could certainly just let it dry for a minute. But again, I didn't use a ton of paint, so mine really was drying nice and quickly for me. And I'm going into a little bit of white over here. I want this to be a little bit more vibrant and soft as it's going up in through this corner over here. And again, you can get yours to be whatever tone you want. I think this, I'm gonna have this just a smudge lighter down here. So I picked up a little bit more white and I'm just gonna kind of put my head back a little bit here, make sure I've got everything 
talking to each other the way that I want it to and you can just keep modifying it as much as you want. We are going to use the same brush for the next step. So once you've got your sky as with as much drama in it as you would like, you can wash and dry this big brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're painting our land. I'm gonna be using my big bristle brush and the colors that I'm using are brown, green, yellow, and white. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna be using a dotting technique and I want my hills to be really dark at the bottom and wherever the sun is not shining. So they'll be dark maybe over here, down at the bottom, and then they're gonna be really light in through here on the edge of this one and on the edge of this one. This one is up to you because this one could be in the shadow over here, but I'm just gonna start with some green and brown on my brush and I'm just using a dotting type technique. A lot of this is gonna be hidden uh, with at the bottom with your big huge fence that we're gonna be putting in. So just know that it's all right if it doesn't look perfect, but I'm using a lot of brown initially. And then as I get up towards those top of the hills, I'll be using more green. And then as I get to the really tippy top of the hills or the center of the canvas, I'll be using more of the yellow. And then at the end, I'm gonna be using a lot of yellow and white at those edges and where it's really close to the tip to where the sun is. I am gonna put some brown and green in through here because this is gonna be hidden by or shadowed by that hill in through there. And again, I'm just using a dotting type technique to give it a little bit of texture to it. You could certainly do more than one layer on this if you find that after that first layer it's not giving you exactly what you you looking for you can certainly let it dry and do another layer but i'm really just going for a nice impressionistic kind of gentle rolling grassy kind of hill that doesn't have a lot of you know, undulating trees and all that kind of stuff. So I'm not going for a whole lot of difficult detail at this point. I'm just getting the illusion and the nice representational aspect of a rolling hill. There's, I live again in, in, in this area that's called the Berkshire Hills of Massachusetts, and we have lots of these hills. I just picked up a little bit of yellow on my brush, so I'm gonna start my transition from green and yellow to making these hills lighter and lighter as they come towards that, that sun. And you can certainly make it as vibrant as you want to, but if you can get that transition to almost be gradual as you go up the hill or towards the uh, towards the light, towards the sun, that would definitely make the best illusion and make it look the most realistic and believable that these are the nice rolling hills. And I, when, as I'm doing this, I'm trying not to have distinct lines of separation. So you can certainly go cross over from one color to the next and that's gonna help you to create a nice gradient as you go. And as I'm doing this, I'm just, thinking of a country morning with a beautiful rooster who's just about to ruin everybody's morning with his super loud crowing as he's seeing this beautiful sun peeking over the hills. So I don't know if you have roosters where you near where you live, but I, I vacationed a couple of places in tropical places where they have these roosters that, oh my God, they are definitely on a mission to wake you up in the morning. And I don't even know if they fully wait for the sun to come up. They're just, whenever they wake up is when they want you to wake up. So, but they're certainly beautiful, I can tell you that. So that's that's where I'm gaining my inspiration for this this painting from is those roosters on the tropical islands that like to wake you up. I'm adding some more yellow and white at the tip of this hill right here because it doesn't feel bright enough to me. So I'm just adding a little bit more pop of lightness at the top of there. And I really want these hills to show a separation between the two of them. So whatever you got to do, 
to make sure that you can see the separation. The separation is going to be caused by contrasting colors. So if you don't have enough contrast in your colors, you're not going to see the separation from one hill to the next. So I'm going to start to really get this area nice and light in here. I just wiped my brush off on my paper towel and I'm going in for some yellow and white right now on my brush. And I'm going to get this to be really super duper light in through here. Maybe a touch of green. And then I'm going to put a little bit more white on my brush. I, I want it to be almost, I don't know, overloaded with the sunshine that's just touching and kissing the edges of these hills as it's peeking its head over and saying, I'm awake, you've got to be awake too. So just have fun with it. If at any time your brush is overloaded and it's not doing what you want, you can either wash it and start over or just wipe it off on your paper towel as I just did because I really want this to be nice and bright and have a lot of life in it and if I had too much brown or my brush was overloaded I might have difficulty getting this as bright as I want it to be so just know don't feel like you can't wash your brush throughout the process I, I tend to be a really lazy brush washer but you might find that you want to wash your brush more than I do, so just feel free to do so. Make sure you have all of your pencil marks covered up by the time you're done with this step. And then we are gonna be switching brushes to our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got your hills all nice and perfectly painted, you can put your large brush away in your water cup, take out your medium brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the first layer of our fence. But before we start this step, I do wanna kind of forewarn you that you want to have your ground dry. So you can either, you know, just take an extra little long break if you need to, or you can blow on it. Or that might take all day. Or you can just take a blow dryer and blow dry it. So whatever you need to do, if yours is already dry, great, but if it's not, do one of those fancy methods I just showed. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the medium brush, we're gonna use just black paint, and as I go through this painting process, I do want my fence to have a lot of perspective to it, so I am gonna have my posts really large on the right-hand side, and then they're gonna get smaller and smaller as they go to the left, and so I keep my perspective in perspective. I'm gonna be doing my one or two of my large ones over on the right first and then my smallest one, and then I can make as many as I want in between. So I know that my focal point is my rooster, so I wanna place that one first. I'm gonna have my rooster about a third of the way over from the right-hand side, and I'm gonna have the post kind of crossing over this this hill a little bit. You can place yours differently if you want to. I want the top of it to be maybe about two and a half to three inches wide and I don't want to have a straight line. And then I'm going to go ahead and make a wobbly kind of line going down towards the ground. And I'm going to do the same thing over on this side. And then I just color it in black. So this is going to be my first post that's going to be the most important, I guess, and then you can make all of your other posts around it, but I'm going to make my next largest one, and then I'll make my smallest one, and then however many I want to put in between is going to be totally up to me. And I'm not using any fancy brush stroke here, I'm just getting the black paint to, to cover it. Again, the post can be any kind of shape that you'd like. So my next one I want to be taller than this one and pretty far over to the right hand side. I'm going to have it overlapping or going off of my canvas a little bit. So it almost doesn't matter how wide it is because the illusion is there's part of it off of your canvas. So if yours ends up being narrow because you don't have much room left, that's okay. The illusion is there that it's going to be bigger because it's taller. And then I'm just going to paint it in black. And then once I've got this huge one done, then what I'm gonna go do the smallest one. So my smallest one is gonna be over on this left-hand side. It's gonna be about a quarter of an inch wide and it's gonna be maybe about, uh, maybe about two inches tall, if that. 
So something like this, it's a really, really tiny. And you can have square tops if you want. We're gonna be adding some three-dimensional elements to these posts later, so I, again, if it's not perfect at the top, it's okay. So then I think I'm gonna have maybe five in between here, four or five. So I'm gonna just make myself little top marks for them. If you really want to give more to the illusion, you can get these to be closer and closer as they go farther away, these little ones. So if this is this wide, each gap would be a little bit smaller as it goes through. But I'm really not going to think about it that hard, but if you want to, you're more than welcome to. So that's one, two, three, maybe four. Hmm, I don't know if I want a fifth one. Let's go for it. I'm gonna put a fifth one right here. Okay, so I've got my five, and now I'm going to, I want them to be skinnier as they go farther away, so I'm gonna make sure this next one is not as wide as that one. And think of these as old rickety fence posts. They don't have to be perfect. They're, they could be spaced unevenly apart. They could be leaning a little bit. I'm gonna have this one leaning a little bit. Feel free to make yours whatever way you want. It's it's your painting. Have fun with it. Maybe this one is, you know, straight up or leaning a little bit. Just try not to have them all leaning in one direction. That might look that uh, it was an error. Just if you want to have them leaning, have, you know, one leaning a little bit and another one straight up. And then once I've got the posts, I've got to do some sort of rail system so they connect. So all I'm really going to do is draw two lines and I'm going to start them skinny here and it's going to be wide over there and the gap is going to be narrow here and wide there. So it's just going to add a little bit of perspective to it. So I'm going to start over here with my black and again I'm just using black paint and it doesn't have to be any perfect rail system. And as I go towards the right hand side, I'm going to start pushing my brush a little bit harder and my line is going to get wider and wider. And by the time you get over to the right one, you might not be able to push your brush hard enough for it to be as wide as you want it to be. So you might end up having to do a couple of different strokes to make sure that you've got it as wide as you want on that last one. And then I'm gonna do the second one. So again, I don't have much room here, so but I do wanna see it. So I'm gonna just start pretty narrow in through here. And then as I get towards this right-hand side, I'm going to get it to go wider and wider, and it will be spread apart farther and farther as I, as I come towards here. So I'm starting to push my brush a little bit harder and harder and then as it comes towards here it's pretty darn wide and that is all I'm going to do for my first layer of my fence we are going to be we're going to use our pencil for the next step so once you've got your first layer of your fence you can put your medium brush away take out your pencil and get ready for the next step all right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are going to be drawing this outline of our rooster with our pencil. And clearly I already have it started here, but I wanted to, there's, it's kind of a more complicated uh, structure for this particular bird. So I really wanted you to have the visual of the shapes and where they're, where they are in relationship to each one. So you, when I'm instructing you to draw them, you're not trying to place a floating shape without realizing what it's gonna be connected to. So I've started it, but I'm gonna take you through each and every one of these shapes. So when I teach birds, the two main things that I teach about the structure of painting a bird is every bird has two shapes to it, an egg, and a circle and the egg part is always the body with the pointy part being where the tail comes out and the circle is always the main structure for the head and they all have different necks they have different tails they have different beaks they have different legs so if it's a swan it still has a circle and an egg if it's a hawk or a bat or a 
duck, they all have an egg for a body and a circle for a head. So this is the same thing, but this is a very complex kind of shaped bird. So again, this is why I wanted to really give you the visual of where the shapes are going and then I'll show you how to, how to get them on there. So I am going to be placing my rooster on this post in through here. I want my body to be above my land. You might not, your, your land might be in a different position than mine. The main goal is to have enough room for the, the top part of the rooster once you put the egg on there. So the egg is gonna be where we start. You're gonna be in essence kind of floating it above your, your post. So when you do this, you're just gonna to wanna to leave yourself a, enough room for the bottom part of the, the body and the legs. So I've got my, my egg tipped a little bit to the right and that's clearly where the pointy part is. The pointy part is gonna be up a little bit from this uh, bottom part of the egg. And the egg is about, it's a little bit longer than it is tall. So you definitely want it to be a little bit wider than it is tall. And I have the top part of my egg about a quarter of the way down my canvas. So that gives you a good perspective as to how far down this the top part of the egg is. And then the next shape that I always do on my, on my birds is the circle for the head. So I have this circle placed about halfway between the top of my egg and the top of my canvas. And it is a little bit to the right of the left side of this egg right here. So you're gonna go a little bit to the right and then you're gonna go up about halfway between the top of your egg and the, can the top of your canvas and you'll do a circle that it comes almost halfway into the center of your egg. So it starts a little bit to the left of the chest and it almost comes about halfway, the right part of it is almost about halfway into your egg. So you'll make yourself a small circle. And then we've got to connect the circle to the egg. And what I've done here is if you just come down the, to the back top of that circle, you're gonna make a little bit of an arcing line that meets the front part of your egg. And then you're gonna do the same type of line that meets about halfway down the back side of your egg. So this is almost like the top of a triangle, but a little bit on the rounder side. Then I'm gonna put a little bit of a beak, so about halfway up the left-hand side of the circle, I'm gonna put the bottom part of my beak. It's not a very big one and it kind of curves a little bit. And then I'm gonna go up just maybe about a quarter of an inch to a half of an inch and make the top part. And then the top, the, the comb part of the rooster is really free form. I do know that a lot of them have it, it in front of their eyeballs and it's kind of poofy in this direction. So I'm gonna, not go all the way to the head. I'm gonna start this a little bit on the beak and then I come up and I do just a bunch of little jagged type lines in through here and then it bumps out or gets a little bit fuller on this back section and it comes right down to this intersecting point where I have the, uh, the top of the triangle and the circle meeting. And then I have to have, I think it's called the waddle, the, the little thing on the side, the skin part. <laughs> I think that's what it's called. I could be totally wrong, but I, I think that's what it's called. So I'm gonna make a little bump out in through here that's gonna represent that, uh, that form. And then I need this bottom part of the, of the rooster where the legs are gonna come out. So I'm going to be doing a similar type triangle shape as I did at the top, only this time it ends at the tail and it comes in through here and I'm gonna stop it about halfway between my egg and my, and my post. And when I go to stop it, I'm gonna put two little like nubs down at the bottom. So instead of bringing this to a point, I'm bringing it in like a little W shape. That's gonna be the top part of the legs as they go into the 
the stump. And that's gonna be that part. And that's all I'm gonna do for the outline of my rooster. So we are going to be using our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got your outline for the rooster done, you can put your pencil down, grab your medium brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're painting the first layer of our rooster. We're gonna be using our medium brush and we're gonna be using black paint only. So right now you do have a main structure for your rooster, which is gonna be easy. We're just gonna paint that in black, but you also need some legs and some tail feathers. And I want these to be more free form as opposed to us trying to outline every single one, which is why we didn't do it in the previous step. So we're gonna tackle those two little pieces first. I'm gonna put black paint on my brush. I have these two little nubs here. All I'm really gonna do is from the left one, I'm bringing a line down to my stump like that. And from the right one, I'm gonna have it at a little bit of an angle. So something like this. We'll put the illusion of feet on there in a future step after we get the, uh, the stump painted. But right now you're just painting black on black and that's where the, the foot is gonna go. So we don't really need to do anything to that right now. And then the tail feathers, these are really big and full and they have a lot of movement to them. So I want this to encompass a real big area. So I'm gonna start, I, they have this light feathery stuff on their back. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna start somewhere in through here. I'm gonna bring my first one really pretty far. Something like this, it's gonna come out like this. And right now I'm just kind of getting my feel of how big I want this plume of feathers to be. So I think I want another one to be really high up here and kind of come over in this direction. I mean, they're, they can be huge. They can be so much bigger than the actual bird themselves. So I don't want you to feel restricted in the size of the feathers that you make. So I like to do almost the, the top and the outside first, and then I'm gonna do the bottom part, and then really the middle is just gonna be kind of black after that. So once I've got that, maybe I've got another one coming in through here. Maybe I've got another one, I don't know, somewhere in through here. And then maybe I've just got a whole bunch of other little ones that come off the bottom in through here. Maybe I've got something out like that. So really I'm just kind of looking at what I want for the edges. I do know that I need to put some feathers coming off of the bum in through here. So I'm gonna just, from this part right here, just make myself a couple of little fluffy pieces coming down, fluffy. That's totally the correct, accurate terminology for rooster feathers. But once I've got something like that, I, w I really want a couple of little peekaboo spots at the edges of these feathers. But really once I've got that main structure of the the way that I want the outside of them to go, I can just paint the inside in black because we're going to be giving it a bunch of visual information as to the different feathers that encompass this tail plume later. So really that's kind of how I'm gonna start. Maybe I'll bump this one up just a little bit more, maybe make this one a little bit wider, but you can, you know, just just play with it and make that silhouette of it the way that you want. And once you've got the silhouette the way that you want, now you're just painting in the entire bird with black paint. The only part that I would recommend you kind of go a little bit slower at is when you're working near the beak because you do want to make sure that you maintain the integrity of the beak. So if your number seven brush is a little bit too big for you to handle during, you know, for that small section, you can certainly switch to your smaller brush. And if you go outside your lines a little bit, don't worry about it because these birds, we're gonna have nice fluffy feathers on the edges of them anyway. So if you do go outside the line a little bit, it's gonna be okay. Maybe your bird just is a healthier bird than, than mine is and has, has eaten more worms than mine has or eaten more bird food. 
I don't know what roosters eat. Do they, maybe they eat some kind of corn type thing or grass. Hmm, I don't know. I don't know what the, the diet of a rooster is. I gotta imagine it's some kind of, I'm sure there's some kind of bugs that they eat. Cause, bird, I don't know. Some birds eat bugs, some be, birds eat seeds, and I don't know. All I know is what the rooster looks like. I don't know what the rooster eats. <laughs> And I'm just going to continue to paint the entire bird in black because this bird is going to, in essence, kind of be in the silhouette a little bit. So I really want these deep tones that are going to help me to provide some rich colors to the bird as I as I paint in the colors. I'm going really slow around this beak because I want to I want to keep my my small little pointy beak. So I'm just going really really slow. And then we are going to be switching brushes. Nope, we're going to use the same brush for the next step. So once you've got your rooster all nice and painted in with black, you can wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we are finishing our fence. So I'm going to use my medium brush and the colors that I'm going to be using are mostly brown, orange, yellow, and white, but I may end up needing or wanting to use a little bit of black too. My main goal here is to get it to look like wood and also to look like it's got a highlight coming from the sun. So I want it to almost look like it's glowing on the edges that are facing the sun. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with some orange and brown on my brush and I'm going to be adding a highlight to the left side of all of the posts that are on the right side of the sun because that's where the light is coming from. And all of the posts that are on the left side of the sun, they're gonna have a highlight on the right side. So these are on the left, these are on the right, and the ones that are in the middle can get a highlight on both sides of them. So here I go. I'm gonna, I have my brown and orange on my brush, and I'm really just wiggling in it. Now your post and rail system might be different than mine. I'm just imagining my post is gonna stick in here, so I will have a little spot that I kind of skip where that post happens. And I know that because we're painting on top of black and I'm not currently using white on my brush, these colors are going to get darker and darker as they dry. So this is really safe to start with these two colors on your brush just to get your highlight in place. And then you can modify it after you have it in place. So I'm doing this one again on the left hand side closest to the to the sun and you can even overlap it past the edge of the wood a little bit. You can also do the top of your rails. So just put a little bit of the highlight and just wiggle it in there and I'm making it stop where it hits the where it hits the the post or on the right hand side I suppose you could bring it over just a little bit because maybe maybe you would see just a smudge of it. And then I'm going to do the same thing. This one is still on the left. I'm doing top of it a little bit and the and the left hand side because these are getting lower and lower as we're going towards the the left hand side. So just a little bit of my highlight in through there and again I'm still just using rust and or uh, orange and brown at this point. I'm gonna put my little bit of a highlight on top of these. And if you end up running through a little bit of wet black from your previous step, if the, if the black hadn't dried, don't worry about it. Just paint it in, no big deal. And these don't have to be clean lines because you're giving the impression of wood. So there could be knots, there could be 
little broken pieces. This particular piece of wood, I can actually have a highlight on both sides of it if I want to get wild and crazy because it's almost directly behind the sun. So that could give you a highlight on both sides. And I just wanted to blend in a little bit with the with the black so it's not just a stark line on the edge of the of the wood. And then I'm gonna do the same thing over here. And I like using multiple colors on my brush at the same time. It really helps to give a more natural appearance. And then all of these ones, I'm gonna put that highlight on the right hand side. And because I'm getting into smaller territory here, I don't really need as much detail. I'm just really almost doing kind of a line down that side. And again, this is just my little first pass. I will go back in to accentuate these in a minute. I just wanna get that highlight on there. And you might find that you like the orange better or the brown better. You can really tweak this the way that works visually for you. But again, it's gonna get darker as it dries. And we're gonna come back right now and add with the yellow and white. So that's my start. Now you can wipe your brush if you want to or just kind of go with whatever is happening on your canvas. I'm going to put a touch of yellow and white on my brush to accentuate the, the, the farthest edge of this piece of wood. So you can get yours again to be as dramatic as you want, but this pop of the yellow and white over there on that far edge is really going to get this to look more three-dimensional. And if you want to get it to blend in with the orange or the, the uh, brown a little bit more, just you can stick those two colors back on your brush to get it to do whatever it is that you want it to do. And if you want a little bit more of that brightness up at the top of the pieces of wood. Again, I'm just adding a little bit of yellow and white onto my brush and you can see how it adds that beautiful piece of highlight in through there. I definitely want some on the top of this particular piece of wood, especially because I know that I'm going to be having some a rooster foot or two on top of there. So I want this to be lighter than black. So when I go to put the feet on, I will have a contrast in my colors in order to do that. So again, just yellow and white. You can get this to be as vibrant as you want or as subtle as you want. It doesn't have to be a super clean transition. This is just a piece of wood. So you can certainly modify it whatever way you want to. I think I'm gonna add a little bit of black to my brush just to make sure I've got a good transition in the back here. And you can do the same too. If you're finding that it's not transitioning into the back of your post enough, or if you want more of like a bark look in the back, you can certainly use your dirty brush and just wiggle in a little bit of the brown and the black. Wiggle it just a little bit. I think there's a song that we talk about that has wiggled it just a little bit in it. <laughs> I wanna see you wiggle it just a little bit. Let's go. Sometimes I get things stuck in my head every now and again that just make me giggle it a little bit. Um, so again, I'm just modifying these, putting a little bit of that bark look on the back of it and a little bit of yellow and white is gonna put that extra pop of a highlight at the, at the edge of it to make it really look like it's coming alive with that sunshine. So you keep tweaking yours, whatever intensity that you want. I'm just gonna cruise along now for these little tiny ones. They get easier and easier as you start to cruise along because you've got that, that momentum in your brush that just lets you just work it till, till that highlight is, is screaming at you saying, yeah, I'm on here, I'm light enough. But I definitely want to add a little bit more on these ones over here, make sure they pop out enough. And then we are going to be, we're gonna switch brushes to our tiny brush for the next step. So once you've got all of your no, we're gonna use the medium brush, sorry. We're gonna use the medium brush for the next step. So once you've got your highlights on your posts, you can wash and dry this medium brush. 
and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're painting the grass at the bottom of the fence. I'm gonna be using my medium brush and I'm gonna be using green, brown, and black. So I really want this to look like it's in the shadows and I want it to be alive and have lots of energy to it. So I'm gonna use a lot of paint. I'm starting with black and I really just flick my brush. I'm going to take it from the bottom and flick it up. Take it from the bottom and flick it up. And you can alternate the colors on your brush. I'm gonna get it to be smaller down in the bottom left hand corner. I'm just starting with black. I'm gonna to go to green next and then brown and then I'll probably come back to black. I want it to look like it's messy, like nobody's come and mowed it in, I don't know, months maybe, but Using a lot of paint, I am going in front of some of the posts. You don't have to necessarily go in front of all of them, but if you want to give the illusion that the fence is on the other side of the, of the grass or the farmland or whatever, you'll want to put some grass behind these posts. And you could, like I said, you can have it really tall. I'm pushing harder and I'm making my pieces of grass bigger on this right hand side and I love the wild side of mother nature so the bigger and wilder it is the better for me. I just put a touch of brown on my brush. I'm not going to do a lot with the brown but just to give the colors a bit more dimension to them so just a little bit of brown. I'm not washing my brush either so you don't need to either if you don't want to. And now I think I'm gonna pick up just a little bit more black just so I can have these colors overlap and look like you've got shadows on the front side and on the back side of some of the green pieces. And I don't overwork it. I don't make these colors all blend together. I just keep adding little blades of grass on top of other blades of grass. And then we are going to be using our small brush for the next step. So once you've got all of these beautiful pieces of wild grass at the bottom of your fence, you can put your medium brush away, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are finishing our legs and our feet. We're gonna be using our small brush and the colors that we're using are black, brown and white and how I'm going to do this is I'm going to start with a little bit of black and put my feet in place. Now I have strategically positioned these legs so you really only need the illusion of part of one foot so the other foot could be on the other side of the post. One foot might be partially on the other side so I'm going to do maybe three-ish toes. <laughs> So how I'm going to do this is I'm going to bring this leg down a little bit into my stump and then I'm going to bring one toe off to the left hand side with a little bit of a claw on the end. I'm going to have, I guess roosters have, I don't know how many toes exactly they have, but I know that they have one that comes out the back of their foot. So I'm going to put one of those out here. I don't want it to be as long as this one. And then I'm gonna give the illusion of one that's maybe on the other side or going on the other side. I'm not using a ton of paint because I don't want it to take too, too long to dry. So once I've got that in place, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wipe my brush off on my paper towel and I'm gonna pick up some brown and white and I'm gonna, in essence, give a highlight to the left side of the leg, which legs, which is the side by the sun. So I have brown and white on my brush and I'm doing a polka dotting type technique. I wanna keep the right side dark as if it's in the shadow and the left side light. So I'm going down the left hand side with a kind of a dotting type technique I'm gonna stop at the foot because I know that it is drying right now. I just picked up some brown paint to transition this real light stuff into the dark. And again, I'm just going to be doing a, a dotting technique because they, they, it's almost like 
a skin type material, material, so, um, it's almost like skin. <laughs> I don't know if it's a, it's not a material, it's skin, Sub substance, I don't know. Um, so that's all I'm going to do to the legs. I'm not really going to do anything too, too fancy. On the toes, all I'm going to do is a highlight on the top of the toes to give, again, the illusion that there's something there. So I just put a little bit of white on my brush like that. I'm going to do a little, well, I need a little bit more white on my brush. A little claw, something like that. And same thing with over here, just add a little bit of the lightness and then maybe a little bit back here. And if you feel like you need a shadow or something, you can certainly bring a little bit of brown and black. I don't really feel like I need one, but if you felt like you wanted to put any darkness around there, you're more than welcome to do so. And if it didn't come out exactly the way that you want, just you know, hide it on the other side of your, your finger, put some grass on it or something. So that's all we're gonna do for this step. We're gonna switch brushes to our medium brush for the next step so you can put your small brush away, take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the first layer of our body and tail feathers. So I'm gonna be using my medium brush and the colors that I'm using are blue, green, red, and a little bit of white. So how I'm gonna do this, I really, this is going to be the dark under colors that are going to just add almost that sheen to the look of the rooster. So roosters come in all different kinds of colors. They can be white roosters and orange roosters and blue roosters and the multicolored rooster that we're doing today. So if your colors aren't exactly where mine are, it's all right. I'm gonna start with the tail and I'm going to be using blue and green are gonna be my dominant colors, but I'll also use a little bit of white as well. And I do wanna kind of give you the forewarning. It's gonna look super bright when it's wet, but again, because we have the black background, it will dry darker. And as you're doing this, I'm going to be not painting the entire black area. I'm gonna leave some of that black area showing. So that way, I'm going to have light spots and dark spots and you're gonna see this really beautiful shadowing in between. So I'm picking up a little bit of green. I don't wash my brush throughout this process. So I have blue and green on my brush right now and I'm doing predominantly the tail feathers at the moment and then I'll work my way into the body. I'm gonna put blue with a touch of white on my brush just to get a little bit more highlight in some of these. We're, we've got another layer that we're gonna be doing on the tail feather, so don't feel that this is the end all be all of the tail feather, um, but I am adding just a teeny bit of white. You can see I've left a lot of the black showing. Now with my dirty brush with the blue, green, and white, I'm gonna start the first layer of the chest feathers, and this is a Less is more kind of step. You don't really need a lot to have a big effect here. So I'm really just going to be taking the remnants of what's on my brush and creating these little feathers along the chest area. And you could have yours a little bit brighter. I'm gonna to touch my brush in the white just to get the ones that are closest to the sun a little bit brighter. So I'm just using the tiny tip of my brush to get these in here. And again, I'm leaving some of that black showing underneath. I wiped my brush off on my paper towel. I'm picking up a little bit more green to bring this green, carry the green into the body a little bit. And then I'm going to be picking up red without washing my brush. I'm picking up some red paint and I'm going to be doing this bottom area. Well, I have a little bit of white on my brush. I'm gonna I'm washing my brush because I don't want white on my on my brush. I must have picked it up by accident. So I wipe in my brush, picking up red. The red is gonna be beautiful as it starts to dry. And again, I'm just doing these little feather 
type strokes, which is very appropriate for the animal that we are painting. It's okay if you overlap the edge a little bit. I'm gonna do this section in through here, and then I'm gonna do a big section in through this chest area above where I did the initial colors. This is gonna go about halfway into the body, and I'm giving it kind of a curve to start it. I'm gonna go over to the edge of the of the body in through there. And then I'm gonna do another section of these red feathers on the back side of the head in through here. So just red paint and right where the comb ends, right through there, I'm going to add some of these red feathers in through here. And while I'm doing this, I'm almost intentionally outlining the area that's going to be the skin part on the face. So I'm just doing these little red feathers in through here and you can bring it down the back of that neck a little bit. And then we are going to be switching to our small brush for the next step. So once you've got this first layer of your feathers on here, you can put the medium brush away in your water cup, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are painting ourselves a beak and an eye. I'm gonna use my small brush and the colors that I'm gonna be using are red, black and white, and a little bit of yellow. Maybe some brown too. <laughs> Maybe, I haven't decided. Uh, so how I'm gonna do this, I wanna give myself a little bit of an outline where my beak and my eye are gonna go. So I'm just gonna use red to do that. So I put a little bit of red on my brush. I know that my beak is gonna come a little bit into my face. So really what I'm gonna do is where this little dip in right there is, I'm going to create myself a little bit of a section where I want my beak to go. And you can always modify it, you know, once once you start painting, but I just really wanted to segregate that little section for the beak. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the eye. So the eye is gonna be somewhere in the middle of the head between the beak and the end of the the corner of the comb where it meets the neck. So somewhere in through here, I'm gonna draw myself a circle that's going to give me an area of which I'm going to put my eye in the middle of it. And it could be, you know, it's pretty small. I think I made mine a little bit big there, but you can always make it smaller if you want to. Now I'm gonna just wash and dry my little brush and I'm gonna paint my beak with black and white. So in essence, kind of a gray color. I don't use a lot of paint on my brush and I wanna keep a little bit of a black area where, oops, I have a little bit of water on my brush. I wanna keep a black kind of area for where the beak opens. So I want it to be pretty light on the top where it's being illuminated by the sun. So something like that. And then I'm gonna bring it back to where I, you know, into the face a little bit. And then I'm going to do a little section down below. And if you feel like you've made yours too bright or too dark, just adjust your colors accordingly. But if you can have some sort of little bright edge over on that left-hand side, some kind of opening where the beak is actually gonna be able to be opened, then you've accomplished all you need to accomplish for that, for that beak. And then when I go to do the eye, think of it as the eye is just a little subtle accent. So I'm gonna start with a teeny bit of yellow on my brush and I'm just gonna give myself a light, a little bit of a light area. And again, I know it's gonna turn a little bit darker as it dries. Then I'm gonna, I wiped my brush off on my paper towel. I'm gonna put a little bit of a pupil and it's just a, a little tiny, tiny accent. So a little, little pupil in through there. And then if I want it to be even more noticeable, I can put a tiny little twinkle somewhere. So that's a little bit too much of a twinkle. So just a little, a little sliver of something. You don't need it to be anything 
really in your face bright and you can certainly keep modifying it if you want but that's really all I'm going to do for the beak and the eye and we are going to be using this same brush for the next step so once you've got your beak and your eye painted in you can wash and dry the small brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we are finishing our face crown comb skin area <laughs> i'm going to use my small brush you might want to use your medium brush but i'm going to use my small brush because it's going to give me a little bit more control the colors that i'm going to be using are white orange yellow and red and this area that we're doing is very textured so i am going to be using my fancy dancy polka dot type method you can pre-mix your colors you can use them alternating if you use them alternating that's almost going to give you a better effect because i'm going to be using a polka dot type effect and this skin type substance in this area really is bumpy and has lots of areas that pop out and go in and so there's light spots and dark spots so my main goal here is to make my lightest area over on the left hand side to emulate where the, the light source is coming from. I need to give a little bit of structure around the back side of the face and around the eye. So I definitely need a little bit lighter areas in through there. And then the rest is just kind of free form. If you want to add lighter colors on the left hand side of these spiky things, that's great or even a little bit lighter in through here. So it looks like it's poking out a little bit. Feel free to do so. So I am starting with all four colors on my brush at the same time. And I'm going to just start with this polka dotting type technique. I really um, initially want to give myself a, a structural base so I know where I want the outside of this to go and where I want my eye to make sure that it is working properly. The red that I did outline the eye and the beak with, those were purely for, uh, uh, for a, a guideline for me when I was painting those two particular things. So you can paint over them in this step. Don't feel like you have to still have that red outline you can paint over it with these with these particular colors but I am finding myself wanting to get the light spot above the eye right now think of it almost like a little bit of a eyebrow area even though it's probably totally not what it's called but it's above the eyebrow I definitely want this area in the front to be really really bright I mean you could even bring a lot of white into this particular section of the the crown or comb or whatever the correct terminology is but I'm definitely just going to keep dotting away here and you can certainly have some of this black still showing through we don't need to cover the black a hundred percent it's really meant to be a nice undertone for this stuff that we're putting on here so it looks like it's almost in the shadows and again the less white you use the more see-through your color is going to be and the darker it will dry so if you want an area to really look like it's shadowed or have a darker tone to it don't use a lot of white and then let it dry on top of that black and it's going to give you a really nice effect i mean you can see where my red has dried down here it's much darker than it was when it was wet so if you want to do the same thing when you're working on the face you could certainly use less white and just the colors will will dry really nice and rich and have a good tone to them so right now i'm just 
alternating my colors. I'm using, I, when I feel like I have too much white on my brush, I wipe it off. When I feel like I have too much of the orange, I'll wipe it off. So I am really just kind of alternating these colors. If I ever feel like I've gone too light, what I am gonna do is just let it dry for a minute. Then I can come back with the darker tones on top of it. But I know this area of the roosters can have so much dimension and texture to it that I'm really not too fearful of making anything too light or too dark because it will work. Whatever kind of happens will, will work. I know that this, I think this is called the waddle, this thing right here, that I'm gonna have that highlighted a little bit too. So once I get over here, I'm gonna make sure that I have that part nice and bright. And again, orange, yellow, and white are my dominant colors and any variation thereof. This is really meant to look almost like a skin color. So if yours ends up, you know, like a peach kind of color, that's fantastic. If it ends up looking more like a light yellow color, that will work too. If you can have add some dimension with it being a little bit shadowed where it gets towards that beak, feel free to do so. And again, if you need to go back into your black at any time, have at it, do whatever you need to do to get this. This is a little, little square for me in through here. So I think I'm gonna add a little bit of darkness around the edge of it. I don't want it to look like he's wearing a beard here. I definitely want it to look a little dimensional. So I'm just adding a little bit of darkness down at the edge of here. And we're gonna have more feathers that are, will definitely help to tell the story later. So you can certainly continue to add and tweak as much of the skin tones as you want to throughout your throughout your beautiful rooster head. I did pick up a touch of black. That's If you see, I just had a little bit of darkness on my brush. I added a little bit of black because I felt like I was a little too light in areas. So I added a little bit more black and red. And then I'm just gonna kind of keep tweaking this until I've got mine as dimensional as I want it. And you can certainly do the same. And then we are going to be switching to our medium brush for the next step. So once you have your comb all nice and combed, <laughs> you can put your small brush away, take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are finishing the body and the tail feathers. I'm gonna be using my medium brush and I'm gonna be using mostly yellow, orange, and white, but you might find that you wanna incorporate a little more green or red or whatever you're feeling is totally fine by me. So my big objective here is to get the left-hand side light. I wanna make sure I have the proper movement in the body, so I wanna make sure that I have the bottom half is kind of bumped out like this and the neck is bumped out like this. And then I'm gonna just throw a couple of bright highlights into the tail feather to, one, because some of the roosters have these light orange streaks, but I also want it to kind of re, almost look like it's glowing from the sun. So I'm gonna start over in the tail first. I'm gonna put some orange and yellow on my brush, and I'm gonna just kind of streak this in on top of some of these feathers and again you can really just be carefree about it have fun with it if you want to just use orange you could i suppose use some red too whatever whatever works for you but you can see i'm not doing too many i just want to give it the you know a nice fun illusion of this bright either detail or a little bit of a highlight or something on here. So again, just have fun. It, it also makes it look a little bit more dimensional when you do uh, this type of step. And then I'm gonna move right on into this area in through here because I have similar colors on my brush that I want. So I'm going to finish the body section in this direction with my brush stroke. So I have orange and yellow on my brush right now. I'm gonna pick up just some yellow right now to put some additional feathers on top of there so I have a multicolored look to it. 
I need all these feathers to look like they belong together and are laying on top of each other. So I'm gonna continue this arcing motion. I'm bringing this right up to this back area in through here. We have one little extra detail that's gonna happen right in through there, but we'll do that as our next step. So I'm just finishing up with this area here. Make sure it looks like it belongs with this little red area that we started. So just make sure that you've got those transitioning nice and well. And again, it's okay if you pop it over that uh, this little part in through here. Now I'm gonna go orange, yellow, and a little bit of white. I'm gonna put a really bright area over here on the edge of my, uh, the front edge of the rooster just to make sure I've got that really super duper bright in through there. And now I'm gonna start to put these feathers in in th into motion. So this is going to be a down and kind of curve in a little bit. And I don't want to bring it all the way into the head. I don't want to bring it all the way into covering up my chest feathers. This is just in addition to, and these are the brighter pieces on top. So I just wiped my brush off on my paper towel, picked up a little bit more of the orange so this is going to give me some added vibrancy to it. And I really want it to look like it's coming out of the darkness. So I'm, I'm concentrating on not putting it too, too close to that neck area. And I think I'm gonna pick up a little bit of yellow, get some yellow on top of this. Yeah, there we go. Now, we, now we're talking. As soon as we add that little bit of yellow on top of there, look how beautiful that is. And you can continue to add as many of these vibrant feathers as you want to. But again, I would really caution you just to make sure that you don't overdo it and lose the dimensional aspect of the, of the bird itself and lose the, the idea that we are in fact looking almost at the silhouetted darker side of the bird that's in the dark right now over on this right hand side. I am just adding a bit more highlight over here to the left because I wanted to. <laughs> you can do it too on yours if you'd like to. And a bit more of the, the brighter kind of feathers and I'm just gonna kind of keep adding a bit here and a bit there until I feel like I've got it. And then once I feel like I've got it, I'm gonna be using the same brush for the next step, but I am definitely going to wash it and dry it in preparation for that step. So you can do the same. All right, so we are on to a really fun step which is putting the saddle on our rooster who knew that roosters wore saddles right so I'm, I'm pretty sure that this is the technical term for it it's this really weird little white poof of soft feathers that's at the base of the tail and where it meet the tail meets the back white poof. So I'm going to be using a little bit of brown and a little bit of white and I'm not using a lot of paint. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing these little polka dots. I'm using both colors so I can have a little bit of dimensional aspect to it and you don't necessarily want it to really look clean. So I am going to have little fluffy edges to it. I might pull my brush out a little bit, um, but I definitely want it to not be really, really super white because it's in the shadows, but I definitely want it to have some dimensional aspect to it. I think actually I'm pulling, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of black too, just to make sure that it is in the shadows and doesn't overtake this little area here. So brown, black, and white, we're gonna be my colors for that. And that's all I'm gonna do for that step. I'm not going overboard. I don't want it to look like a big cotton ball thing happening back here. And then we have one tiny little step left to go that we're gonna do with our small brush. So once you have your saddle on, you can put your medium brush away, take out your small brush and get ready for the final step. 
All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of any painting, which is to sign it. So I'm gonna use my small brush. I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right corner. I'm gonna sign this one in the bottom left. I am gonna be using my initials. You could certainly do your first name or the date or a symbol, whatever works for you is totally fine by me. It is your identifying mark. And that is going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a radical rooster. And I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime. <laughs>